Praise the Lord. Let's give that to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy to be praised. God, we magnify you today. Thank you for what you're going to do, for what you've already done, Jesus. We give you glory and honor, God. We know that it's all by you and that it's for you. And without you, we could do nothing, God. In the name of Jesus, praise God. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here today behind this sacred pulpit. Thank you, Brother Williams, for that sweet introduction this morning. I give my pastor and my pastor's wife double honor this morning and his family. I give my bishop and his precious wife double honor this morning. I wouldn't be here today without the leadership in my life and my family. I give them honor today. I'm so thankful for what God's already done. And I'm so thankful for the music this morning. Thank you, Brother Zane, his leadership, and the anointing that's in this place for ushering in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles this morning, I would like us to turn to 2 Samuel chapter 22. And we're going to read verse 1 through 3. Praise God. My title this morning is you can trust Jesus for salvation. You can trust Jesus for salvation. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 through 3 says, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock and Him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower and my refuge, my Savior. Thou savest me from violence. You may be seated. Praise God. Lord, thank You for Your Word today. Anoint my lips, God. Touch us to receive Your Word this morning. Help us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. In this portion of Scripture where this chapter is located in the Bible, it is at the very end of the book of 2 Samuel. When you look at the end of the book of 2 Samuel, chapters 21 through 24 of 2 Samuel are an appendix to 1 and 2 Samuel. The subject matter of these chapters, which come from various stages of David's life, are random and not in chronological order of occurrence. In this particular chapter is David's song of thanksgiving. It is, also, it is almost a mirror image of Psalm chapter 18. It was put together or composed near the end of his life after the Lord had delivered him from his many enemies, after he'd established his rule over Israel and promised redemption through his seed. In verse 3, the scripture that I really want to focus on is David said, the God of my rock, in Him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower and my refuge, my Savior, Thou savest me from violence. Right after David says in Him will I trust, he explains and gives us more detail of his trust in the Lord. He says, He is my shield. Psalm 18 Verse 30 says, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. That means proven. He is a buckler or a shield to all of those that trust in Him or to take shelter in Him, protection in Him, or refuge in Him. David said, He is the horn of my salvation. This means the strength of my deliverance or my rescue. David said in verse 18, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. This morning I've come to tell someone, if you come into this house and you've been dealing with unexplainable situations and with people that you thought were your friends, but it seems like they are trying and doing everything they can to bring you down, just like the Lord delivered David, He will deliver you. Praise God. David said, He is my high tower. It means a secure height of retreat and safety. David said, He is a refuge, 
a place of escape. David said, He is my Savior. Thou savest me from violence or wrong. Meaning, He delivered me. Praise God, praise God. Our world today is in a place of such chaos. It tries to offer us false security in a temporary removal of ourselves from problems and situations, from traumas, from enemies. It tries to offer us drugs to escape reality for a temporary time. It tries to offer us more money and work that takes us from our families and takes us away from spending time with the Lord. Just like with David and the violence and the struggle that David went through. However, David had a covenant from God. God promised David and Israel that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, would come from the lineage of David and the tribe of Judah, and he would establish a kingdom that would endure forever. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 10 through 13 says, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness Afflict them any more, as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. And I will establish his kingdom forever. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. This was the covenant that God made with David that Nathan the prophet spoke to David that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, would come from the lineage of David and the throne of his kingdom would be established forever. And the next in line heir to the throne, Solomon, after David would pass, after David would pass away, Solomon would build a house for the name of the Lord. In Luke chapter 1, verse 31 through 32, it tells us, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Micah chapter 5, verse 2 says, But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 through 7 tells us, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. In Psalm chapter 90 verse 2, Moses says in his prayer, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting Thou art God. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted as God with us. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. If you look at Jesus in its most pristine translation, it means Yeshua, which means God has become salvation. Church, I'm here to preach to you this morning that the very God that delivered David from his enemies and was his salvation and his rescue and his shield and his high tower and his Savior from wrong and violence and his refuge is the same God that came to save his people from their sins. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack 
concerning His promise. As some men count slackness, but His long-suffering. His promise, as some men count slackness, His long-suffering to usward. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That all should come to repentance. John chapter 1 verse 29 says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus represented God, providing Himself a Lamb, not just for Israel, but for the whole world. Not just for Israel, but for the whole world. Not just for Israel, but for the whole world. He came and He died for you. Hallelujah. God, we praise You. We give You glory. Hallelujah. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Right here, pay attention, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Thank you, God, for coming, for robing yourself in flesh, for dying for my sin, God, in the name of Jesus. I will never forget. <clears throat> you may be seated. Praise God. Thank you for standing. Hallelujah. I will never forget when a young man by the name of Brother Ivy decided to trust Jesus for his salvation. I will never forget my wife telling me about an awesome guy that she invited to church. She had met him at Lowe's in Monroe. And she told me that she was getting ready to unload some rock in her car. When all of a sudden, she caught a big man walking directly to her from the corner of her eye. I remember she said when she first saw him walking to her, it scared her. He asked her if he could help her unload the rock. And out of the situation happening so fast and the way it shocked her, she said, no, I can unload it, but thank you. She told me after that she felt convicted because she did not invite him to church. Right there in that moment, she told the Lord, if I find one English invitation card, I will invite him to church. She had one left. I will never forget that later that night, around 10 o'clock, we taught Brother Ivy, his sister Patsy, and a guy named John, an end to his marvelous light Bible study. This Bible study tells you what the plan of salvation is in obeying the gospel. And at about 2 in the morning... Those incredible people repented of their sins and were baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins. And about a week later, Brother Ivy got the Holy Ghost with the evidence in speaking in other tongues. My wife and I talked about how you could see the change in his life. How his whole demeanor changed. He was full of the joy of the Holy Ghost. I'll never forget, me and her have talked time and time again about uh, we, had, we have some pictures and uh, when we were teaching the Bible study. And um, time and time again, she said, Luke, 
She said, after he got the Holy Ghost, you could just see his whole demeanor changed. Before he got the Holy Ghost, uh, man, he was just a tough, gruff guy. Just big guy. And um, you could tell that he had a hard life. And um, I'll never forget pictures after receiving the Holy Ghost. There was a smile on his face. And there was a joy. And any time Brother Ivy gave you a hug, it was unlike no other. Nobody could give you a hug like Brother Ivy. Man, when he wrapped you up, he had you. And he had a, a handshake as strong as I ever remember. Praise the Lord. But his whole facade changed. And I remember... When we would go out and do street evangelism and when we would do outreach, I thought I was fast at inviting people to church and going from house to house. I couldn't keep up with him. I remember one time we were inviting people to church. And, uh, you know, we always tried to keep an eye on Brother Ivy. You know, he felt like one of our own, and we felt like definitely we were responsible for him. And I remember... One day we were out there inviting people to church and he was moving so fast through so many people. I was like, man, how are we going to keep, keep up with this guy? But he was so enthralled with passing out invitation cards. And he was so enthralled. He wanted somebody so bad to experience the Holy Ghost and experience the plan of salvation. i never forget one time we were there and uh, he was out there just, I mean, like this. He'd start here and he'd run over here passing cards out and flyers just going, going to town. And uh, he run up to me and said, hey, quick, 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 man. I need some more cards. I need some more, some, uh, more flyers. And I was like, Bro. and I hated to say this, but I was like, man, we don't have any more. That's the last thing you ever want to tell anybody on outreach. Man, is we don't have any more flyers or invitation cards. And uh, but what God did for Brother Ivy, He can do it for anybody. Praise God. He can do it for anybody. The first step in trusting Jesus for salvation is, first off, we have to know what is the plan of salvation. The soul method whereby a person can see and enter the kingdom of God. Brother Zane, if you can uh, make your way to the music. In John chapter 3, verse 1 through verse 8, it tells us, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, And any time you see verily, verily, that is very, very, very important. Verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one. That is born of the Spirit. So what must I do? God requires that we are born of the water and of the Spirit to see and enter the kingdom of God. In John chapter 7 verse 38 through 39. It says, He that believeth on me as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39. But this spake he of the Spirit which they that believe on him should Receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus had not yet 
been resurrected from the grave. That had to happen. He had to be resurrected from the grave. And he had to ascend and go back in to heaven before the Holy Ghost would be poured out. When we look at this scripture, the word believeth and believe in these two verses means to commit one's trust to, combined with being obedient to Christ. That's why in this portion of scripture, we see if we believe on him, we will, we will receive his spirit. Faith motivates or causes us to obey. And when we obey, it brings God's acceptance and blessing. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 through 25 tells us, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again not of corruptible or perishable seed, but of incorruptible or imperishable seed by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever for all flesh is as grass the grass withereth and the flower thereof fadeth away but the word of the Lord endureth forever and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you praise God the apostle Paul tells us what the gospel is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1-4, through 4, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures if we could all stand praise the Lord praise God the apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6 verse 3 verse 3 through 6 know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. The Apostle Paul is telling us that we have to be dead to our sin before we can be planted together in the likeness of His death. After, after we are planted or buried with Him in baptism, then we are to be raised with Him to walk in the newness of life. I'm here to tell you this morning that if you came into this house in chains and in bondage, because He rose from the grave, we can rise with Him to walk in the newness of life through the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Hey, we will see different. We won't walk the same. We won't carry ourselves the same. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We don't have to leave with the addictions and the anxiety and oppression that had us bound when we walked in this place through the resurrecting power of the Holy Ghost. So why must I obey the gospel? Romans chapter 8 verse 9 through 11 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But if the Spirit of him raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. The great Apostle Peter told us what to do to enter the kingdom of God on the birthday of the church in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. He told us how to obey the gospel. He said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Peter said, you got to repent. you got to die out till you sin. If you're walking this way, just like our dear precious bishop preached last Tuesday night, repentance is a total change in direction. If we're walking this way in sin, we turn and we make a change in direction and we start walking towards Jesus. Praise God. Then he says, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's when we're buried with Him in baptism. We're buried with Him as He was buried in the grave. We take on His name in baptism. And then we shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the resurrecting power that gives us the power to overcome anything that has us bound. It gives us the power to be a witness and to go to someone and tell them what God did for me, how He saved me, how He delivered me from fear and anxiety and broke the bondage of addiction in my life and how He put my family back together, how He gave me peace. Folks, I'm here to tell you. You may be asking, where does this happen? Where does this happen? I want to tell you, the Bible plainly says, today is the day of salvation. You don't have to wait. Don't put it off. But I open these altars this morning. If there's anybody here that you don't want to leave the same way you came in, that you want God to fill you with the Holy Ghost, as the Scripture said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and suddenly there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and they received, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. If you want the Holy Ghost today, if you want that resurrecting power that will give you power to overcome any situation, it will give you power, it will bring peace in your life. You're looking at somebody that for 16 years of my life, for 16 years of my life, I struggled with fear and anxiety. For 16 years of my life, I remember when I made a decision about probably time, I I lose time, when I was 18 years old, that I wanted to continue taking an anxiety medication. I'll never forget, I wanted to continue taking an anxiety medication because I was trying to escape escape some things that I had not yet dealt with in the Holy Ghost and I remember my precious dad one day I asked dad I said dad I said uh, I think I need more medicine dad said oh no 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 thank God for a mom and dad in church dad saw where that was going and this is a personal testimony I'm telling you what God can do you're looking at somebody that was on medicine for about 16 years I'll never forget the day when I felt the nudge of the Holy Ghost say, it's time to be done with that. You've got to deal with this. You're looking at somebody today that because Jesus was resurrected and rose from the grave, because He did that, I was able to receive that resurrecting power. I didn't have to walk in that fear and anxiety no more. I didn't have to rely on a medicine no more. But the Holy Ghost gave me clarity. It turned my life around. And no matter what you're going through today, God can change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God, I thank you for your presence in this place. God, we worship you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, you know every situation today. You see every need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I trust you. I trust you, God, for everything, Jesus. God, you're the only one that can do the work. You're the only one that can save me, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, I trust you. I yield myself to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I worship you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, I yield myself to you. Oh, hallelujah. God, you're worthy. You're worthy, God. God, I can trust you with everything. There's no place in my life you don't see. Hallelujah. There's no situation you don't see. Hallelujah, God. Oh, I want all of you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Congregation, you can come and help us pray this morning. Oh, Thank you so much for joining us for service today on live stream. If you'd like to see more content from Souls Harbor, you can check our YouTube channel out. And if you'd like to know some details about the various ministries of Souls Harbor, you can see some of that on our website. We're praying for you and believing that God's moving on you and that his hand is going to work a miracle in your life.